You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. My name is Greg Jackson. I'm a PhD holding historian, a professor, and the creator of History That Doesn't Suck, a podcast that makes legit, seriously researched American history come to life through entertaining stories. Join me for a chronological telling of the United States story, from the revolution to fractious civil war, tenacious inventors, brave reformers, and more. With more than 100 episodes, you can already binge listen your way from 1776 to the early 20th century. Listen to History That Doesn't Suck on Spotify. Hey everyone, welcome to our special Gettysburg Address book recommendations mini episode. I'm Rich. And I'm Tracy. Hello y'all. Early in November 1863, four months after the guns fell silent at Gettysburg, Abraham Lincoln received an invitation to be present and participate in the ceremonies dedicating the Soldiers National Cemetery at the small Pennsylvania town. Lincoln's invitation made clear that he was not to be the main speaker at the ceremony. The main oration would be delivered by America's most celebrated speaker, Edward Everett. Lincoln's invitation read, It is the desire that, after the oration, you, as chief executive of the nation, formally set apart these grounds to their sacred use by a few appropriate remarks. On the day of the ceremonies, Thursday, November 19th, Everett spoke for two hours and eight minutes, which wasn't actually an unusually long speech back in those days. But then Abraham Lincoln rose and spoke for about two minutes, moving from past to present to future, using some 270 words to share his vision of what made the Union worth fighting for, and his expectation that the terrible Civil War would produce a new birth of freedom for millions of Americans. Afterward, Edward Everett would write to Lincoln and say, I should be glad if I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two minutes. With this month being the 150th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address, we wanted to give you some book recommendations so that you can study up on Lincoln's speech yourself and appreciate the timeless message Abraham Lincoln wanted to communicate that day at Gettysburg, as well as understand the enormously significant issues that were at stake in 1863. We thought of doing a full-blown episode this month on the Gettysburg Address, but we decided to wait until we reached November 1863 in the podcast timeline, and that way the episode and our discussion of the address will be set in its actual context. And so we'll just run through these recommendations fairly quickly for you, and we'll have them up on the podcast website, of course, so you can always find them there. Well, first, there's Lincoln at Gettysburg by Gary Wills. And this book won the Pulitzer Prize, and it's really an excellent, thoughtful analysis of the intellectual underpinnings of Lincoln's address. Next is The Gettysburg Gospel by Gabor Borat. This book is based on years of study. Borat was for many years the director of the Civil War Institute at Gettysburg College, and his book on Lincoln's Address sets it within the historical context of a nation shaken by three years of war. Up next is a book that just came out this year from the University of Kansas Press. It's Writing the Gettysburg Address by Martin P. Johnson. And in this book, Johnson shows Lincoln's emotional and intellectual journey in writing the speech. And it's almost an hour-by-hour narrative of how Lincoln wrote and delivered the address. We're very excited to recommend this next book to you. The book is titled Long Remembered, Lincoln and the Five Versions of the Gettysburg Address. This book not only looks at each of the five copies of the address that Lincoln wrote in his own hand, but each of the five versions is digitally reproduced in full-color, full-size facsimiles. And two of them are also reproduced unbound, so you can pull them out. Levenger's, the small imprint that published the book, even went so far as to fold the paper just like Lincoln did. 
It's the closest you can get to holding the Gettysburg Address in your hands. This book is a bit pricey, but we picked it up last year and it's absolutely top quality, and those reproductions are incredible. And Levenger's has let us know that for the 150th anniversary of the address, they've lowered the price of Long Remembered a bit. And then our next recommendation is a bit different. It's a graphic novel or a graphic adaptation of the Gettysburg Address. But it's no comic book, and this isn't exactly for kids. In fact, the text is written by John Hennessy, and it's actually a pretty intelligent, in-depth study of each section of Lincoln's speech. And it all makes for an interesting presentation. So I encourage you to check it out yourself, and I think it would make a great Christmas gift, especially for an older teen or a college student that you think might be interested in the Civil War or Abraham Lincoln. And then we have one more recommendation, but it's not a book or a graphic novel. It's a DVD called The Gettysburg Story. Gabor Boret's son, Jake, produced this DVD, and it's really just eye candy for Civil War buffs, since it uses cameras on those little helicopter drone thingies to capture bird's eye views of the Gettysburg battlefield. The visuals are simply amazing. It's narrated by Stephen Lang, the actor who played George Pickett in the film Gettysburg, and at the end of this DVD, he gives the absolutely best recital of the Gettysburg Address that we've ever heard. So there you go. Uh, like we said, with this month being the 150th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address, we just wanted to give you some recommendations so that if you desire, you can study up on the Gettysburg Address yourself. And as always, you can find all these recommendations at the podcast website, which is www.civilwarpodcast.blogspot.com. 